Hey everybody, Jonathan here from Corsac Props. Today we're going to be talking about making fancy dancy blueprints in Fusion 360. So I'm going to show you a little example here about what I'm talking about. And I should already have this open, but whatever. Uh, let's see. This is the final version. So this is what I made earlier. This is my uh, blueprint for... Uh, John Sword from Ruby Season 4. Now we're just going to take the drawing that we had in Fusion and then we're going to turn it into this. So we also got pages to let you print them out and then we've got a full image here. So as an example, we're going to go ahead and use John, uh, Rick's 9-gauge uh, plasma pistol from Rick and Morty. Uh, I did this design not too long ago. Now, I've already saved this as a separate file called Blueprint, because I'm going to do things to this file that are not good for the 3D print version, but will help us in the end. And there's really only one change that needs to be made here, and this is sort of what you need to look for. We've split this here to have it easily 3D printed, but if I leave this in, when we look at the Blueprint from here, there will be this line there, and we don't want that. So, we're going to go ahead and combine these two. Uh, most files are a little more complicated than this. Like with John Sword, I had to combine everything together uh, and do all of that. Um, but for now, this this will do. So we've got everything ready. We're going to go up here to File and Drawing, New Drawing from Design. So now we've got this design selected. Uh, actually... I just thought of something that else that needs to be converted. So if I do this, so let's go ahead and combine this guy and that guy into there. Then they're going to do it here. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and open our drawing because uh, I don't think those lines were showing up, but I wasn't. I want to be sure. Now I've already measured this. This is 300 millimeters from here to here. So we're going to go ahead and do an A2. That'll give us a little room to play with on the edges. So this is the sheet size. So you'll have to note that because when you print this as a PDF, you'll need that size if you're going to do the full drawing at full scale. Now, some weapons you can't do at full scale. That's because, you know, some stuff's rather big and uh, all of that. But as you see, we've got the, the file in here, but it's sort of wanky. So we're going to come over here to this guy. Uh, we're going to use top, which is this side. And as you can see, we've got a really neat little almost 8-bit looking gun here. But that'll go away here in a minute. So we're going to change the scale to 1 to 1 because it'll fit. So we're going to drop this into the file right about here. And that's where we want that to stay. Uh, we can adjust these settings. Some of them matter depending on how complicated the drawing is. But this one's pretty simple. And like I said, we combine stuff to get rid of most of the... The, the strange little weapon or edges in there so we're going to go ahead and hit ok and that will convert it into our fancy blueprint now here comes the really fun part we're going to do projections so if I project to the back here this will be the back of the weapon this will be the front of the weapon this will be the top of the weapon and then the best one is the isometrics. I really like these isometrics. They just give you kind of a neat overview of what the prop looks like from a different angle. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. What that did is uh, convert all them to the line drawings and that's great. Now this down here is your title block. Uh, this is used for engineering stuff, obviously revisions and all that fancy stuff. I usually delete those. Uh, you could make your own custom one. I don't use it because I'm going to drop the company logo in here and the name of the prop down in this space here. But that's about it. However, we do want to add some stuff and I'm going to show you some fancy features. So as you saw with John, let's get John back up here. I did, what I'm about to do, I'll show you on the thing, is I did a, a section cut or a, what's this called, a detail view to show off this etching in here because I wanted to show off that finer detail in a much more grandiose way. And I'll do that with props that have nice etching in them and stuff like that. Just an effort to help out, you know, in case somebody needs it. And so how you do that, we'll do a detail view. So we'll go ahead and do this part right here. Just going to select the view we want. Going to select the center of the circle. 
and we'll make a circle and that gives us this you can change the scaling over here if you want it bigger or smaller uh, unfortunately it does cut it in a circle all the time I think they look cool so I'll go ahead and leave it we hit OK there we go uh, now if I did want to move this around afterwards I could just grab here and chuck it around you do that with most of these guys uh, this guy you could put pretty much anywhere he's good where he's at uh, these ones I think are because they're a projection they are stuck in the plane that they are in but usually that's pretty cool it gives you an overview of how that weapons laid out so we don't need this now this circle is distracting and as you saw in my other drawing I don't have it there that was an edit we made in Inkscape and I'll show you how we're gonna get this out into Inkscape and finish this file in a second so we're gonna delete that bye bye uh, another one we've got up here is section view so let's say I want just to take this little section right here go ahead and hit enter there and that's gonna give me just that section right there now it's not very useful this prop doesn't need it but sometimes you want to show the inside uh, in fact on this one it might be beneficial to show sort of this part right here and hit enter and you know that would show sort of the just the details of that trigger assembly there but again this prop doesn't need it so I think we're pretty much done here except for a couple things uh, you can add text uh, so leader is is a drawing like this and you could just say Rick's gun isn't fake and that just drop that in there we could play with the scaling all of that but we don't need that you can just add text everywhere but we're gonna go ahead and add some dimensions so we're gonna go from here to here and then from there to there and okay that was weird I don't know why it did that it gave me a degree so let's try this again I don't know if it's because they're just off ever so slightly or what I did this last time and it gave me this slanted I'm not entirely sure how to fix that uh, let's see I think I can pull this up no can't do that all right anyway uh, there's if you play with that I just haven't had a chance to dig into them but uh, as you can see they're pretty precise they're in metric because my files in metric and it's usually how I roll but we're gonna go ahead and add the alternative units which is gonna be Imperial and we're gonna give that a nice you know a precision we want that to be a nice round number because you don't I mean it's a blueprint you don't need out to the exact tenth of a millimeter hundredth of a millimeter all right and now these are pretty small we'll enlarge them here in a second when we get to inkscape but that is pretty much it in fusion this is the blueprint we've now got good to go we're going to go in and do some minor editing in fusion or in uh, inkscape so we're going to go ahead and export this as a pdf now i've already kind of already done this once because somebody's mic was turned up a little too much and now we'll come into Inkscape and we're going to import said file that we just created so we've got our export and this is going to be important so there's nothing we really need to change in the default settings uh, there's not really a lot of image things to play with we just import text as text you know everything should be good it's only one page long that drops it in here but something we do need to do is change the size of the document so control alt uh, control shift delete sorry brings up this display we know that it is an A2 drawing uh, just as reference John's was an A0 because they need a pretty big one and it's in landscape now we need to line this up with the page so we're going to come up to object align and distribute relative to page is what we want 
and we're going to center and center. And now this guy is all ready to go. So we don't need that anymore. Now we can come in and play with this and make it a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and double click on this a couple times. That'll let us drill down into into the, the groups without having to break them all up. And we're going to enlarge this. And if you don't know this in Fusion, uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm not maintaining my aspect ratio. But if you hit Alt, you uh, maintain aspect ratio. If you hit Shift, you maintain aspect ratio and center. So we're going to make this nice and big. And then we're going to drop it up on top of the line. Do the same thing over here. Uh, now, I'm having a an issue. Actually, because I'm in here, I'll try to show it to you. See, it, if I try to add text, it gets weird with these imports. You could delete these and just remake them. Uh, I'm not that too cranky about having the millimeters in there. So it's not a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and get this enlarged up. And that's good to go. Now, if you do need to edit some lines, you can come in here. Now, sometimes this happens. And uh, I think John's still open, didn't he? Or did I close him again? I keep closing that guy. But on the John one, I had to come in and edit a lot of stuff because it was a curved shape. And so I was getting some projections even in the top-down plane. So I went ahead and removed those because they just don't need them in a blueprint. But this one doesn't have anything like that. Uh, so not a big deal like if we had left that in we could come in and delete that line that we left in there if needed but I don't think we need to do that uh, so now we've just got to prep this to be our final image so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my logo because that's what I do so we're gonna take the logo company logo put it here in the bottom and I'm gonna add some text up here. And you can go hog wild with all this. I mean, if you really want to go over the top, you can add uh, flavor text in and a bunch of stuff. I'm not really going to worry about it for this one. I did do one for uh, Snowball that we try to turn into a shirt I need to get one for myself but I'll show you that here in a second but this is what we'll call done for the first page of the document uh, so it's got the grid line in it so it looks kind of cool and professional and we can go ahead and export this as a PDF now because we made that page the right size when we go over here and hit save and save as first off we need to save it as the final SVG. That's important because as you save as as you save as a PDF, it's not going to be beneficial. You can't edit it. So if you do have to go make a minor tweak later on, you want that SVG. All right. Now we're going to save as a PDF, and it's going to get cranky here because I already got one in there. And on none of these, I convert text to path usually works because it text sometimes gets weird and if you just convert it to path it makes things a whole lot nicer um yeah export area is the page and we're done so that exported there and now we have this as a pdf now we're going to create two more pages so let's go ahead and open our drawing again we're gonna to go to a standard US letter in portrait and this is gonna be our printable template so we're gonna delete the cool stuff cuz you know and now we've got just the pistol and so uh, another neat trick in Inkscape as you can see I'm locking in on certain increments of a rotation I'm pushing control to get that to happen, in case you didn't know. Now we're gonna split this up into a two because it won't fit on one because it's just a little too big. So I'm gonna pick a nice point here and now we can save as a PDF, page dose, 
Same settings, yes, replace. Now I'm gonna cycle this up. And now we know that that cut point was about here. So we're gonna drop to the other side of that little nub. And you could go the extra mile and center these and make sure that everything's fine, but you're gonna tape them together. So it's not all that big a deal. You just line those lines up. Nothing goes through my printer straight anyway, whenever I try it, so. And that's the third page right there. So that's done. That's all the elements we need. Now we need to combine them. And I'm using just some generic tools. As you can see, I've already got all of them up there. So let's upload our new ones we just created. These three files. We'll send them up. What that's going to do is just combine them all into one document. Uh, there's other programs and other ways to do this, but I find this to be the easiest. It's just to find one of these online converters. This is combinedpdf.com. And as you can see, we've now got a document that has the first page is an A0. The second page and the third page are 8.5 by 11s. You can just print those out, make your templates, and go from there to make your weapon. That is a finished PDF, and uh, it's pretty cool and easy to work with. I'm really liking Fusion for this. It allows you to do a lot of cool stuff and really get that a little more distance if you are trying to uh, make a little money off of your designs. You can create PDFs. That's what I do. We list them up in our Etsy store and along with the 3D files. And... If you just need to kind of get your head around a design or if you've got another weapon you want to uh, do and you may maybe you want to 3D print part of it but need the other parts for uh, foam building, this is the way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show a little bit of what else you can do in here. Uh, this is a little advanced thing we did. I made this using pretty much everything we just showed you and I created a cool little uh, design for my boy Snowball. So we went ahead and did the exact same thing we were talking about. We added the leader indicators and we made this cool little design, exported it out, played with it in Fusion, and then I even brought it in and made a t-shirt design out of it using a blueprint image, fuzzing up this stuff a little bit and all of that. So uh, it can help you do stuff like this as well. I uh, hope that's helpful. Hope it's uh, interesting to you guys. And uh, we're going to try and do more of this kind of stuff, more of these Fusion 360 tips, little short videos to help you out. Uh, if there is something you have questions on, let us know in the comments. We're going to start trying to do these on a semi-regular basis. So hopefully you guys have a lot of blueprints in your future. And uh, if you want to check out ours, they're on our Etsy store. The link will be in the description. You can also check, our web out, check out our website for all the cool stuff we make. Uh, we've got tools, we've got materials, we've got scale mail, everything up on that website. So you can go check that all out. Uh, I hope you all have a good day, and I'll catch you next time.